Ja. All right, we are joined now by South Carolina and representing them is head coach Don Staley and student athletes Chloe Kitts and Malaysia Paul Wiley. Coach, if you would please make an opening statement. Um, we, uh, we were happy to get out there and um, um, knock some rust off. I thought Presbyterian did a great job at uh, uh, spacing the floor and utilizing the weak side of the floor. And they, they really uh, did a great job at uh, getting some easy buckets against us. Um, they made us adjust. I thought our team did a really good, great job at adjusting, especially in the third and fourth quarters. Um, and then we got some, some really good play. I mean, with the two that are um, sitting up here, Chloe was perfect from the floor with the double-double. Um, they did a great job at uh, knocking down some threes for us. Open up for questions just for the student <clears throat> athletes first at this time. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, Alan, with the first one. Uh, my legend, you said after the SEC tournament opener you had some nerves. Um, today, didn't look at any, any – what was kind of your feeling out process? Did it take a couple possessions to settle down in your first tournament game? What was that like? Um, you know – me and my team, we're just doing a great job just moving on to the next. So I feel like today we focus on winning this game so we can just prepare for the next game. Let's go over the front. Pete. Chloe, you were feeling it today. It looked like, was it important for you to have this kind of game knowing Camilla wasn't going to be there and then Bree was out too? Um, I feel like it was important for my confidence. Um, recently, I've been like low on confidence, but my coaches and teammates, um, they uplift me and they were finding me and just pass me the ball. And, yeah. Other questions for the student athletes? Let's go back to Pete again. Play. Well, this was your first NCAA tournament game. What was the experience like for you? Um, it was great. You know, the atmosphere was great because we're home, so I love that. And it was just happy. I was just excited to be here, really, with my teammates and just living in the moment, just enjoy every step of the way. Other questions? Let's go to Chapel. Hey, for Chloe, uh, North Carolina is next up for y'all on Sunday. Just what do you remember about the game earlier this year? What do you, uh, what do you think are keys for y'all going into that one? Um, last time we played them, they rebounded very well. Um, it was a pretty close game. And we just got to play together, play aggressive, um, out rebound them, and you know, just keep playing how we've been playing, playing together, and we'll be fine. Any other questions for the student athletes? <coughs> if not, we'll let them go. The locker room remains open for a little bit. We'll take questions now for Coach Staley. Start over here with Pete and go to Alan. Dawn Bree's status, is she okay? She just needed to sit out today. Has she got like a kind of a lingering issue or something that you're concerned about? No, not concerned. I mean, it's just something that uh, we felt like we had enough to, to to go into this game and win the game. And then we'll we'll see how she feels uh, um, tomorrow. But she, she, she was fine. Let's go to Alan. Uh, you mentioned a second ago about your team adjusting second half. Is there anything specifically you felt like they adjusted well to, especially that could help you Sunday and going forward? Um, I, I don't know if Sunday it will help us, but I, I just thought they exploited our inability to guard on the weak side of the floor. Um, we did a much better job um, collectively. Um, some players do have uh, some work to do when it comes to that. Um, but we did a great job covering up for um, from the first half to the second half. <clears throat> Other questions for Coach Staley? Let's go to Chapel. Hey, Don, uh, you mentioned earlier in the week you stopped by the team hotel um, for Sacred Heart and Presbyterian. Um, Coach said yesterday, you know, her girls were kind of fangirling seeing you. What, what makes it important to do stuff like that and kind of give these 16 seats um, a, a good time down here in Columbia, would you say? Um, they requested it. <laughs> I mean, they requested it. And, you know, if, you know, if they, they have enough uh, just 
I want to say a gall, but to to want to meet me, I I'm gonna make it possible for them to meet me. I, I think it's important for us to, even if they just know some of the history of our game. I think that was really important, and you know I'm I'm all for uh, making sure our history is in a in a, in a great place. Um, but we, we talk more about me being on the Martin Show than actually basketball stuff. <laughs> Any other questions for Coach Staley? Go back to Pete in the front. We pulling teeth up in here, huh? I guess so. <laughs> Dawn, I mean, this was another – again, you knew you were going to be without Camilla. The team's done. You know, they've won all their games when she hadn't played. Were you happy with how they responded uh, at the floor having two starters out today? Yes, yes. I mean, granted, you want your full squad. We we've been very successful when we've had our our full squad. You know we've had two, you know we have two two starters out, um, and I don't in preparation of it. I I don't think about having two two starters out. We just worry about who we have that's that's um, that's ready to play, and we just try to coach them up. Um, so I mean they they've had enough experience. Um, who well, Fagan started? Fagan started for us before. I mean, she's one of our most experienced uh, post players. She did a great job. Um, Tessa, on the other hand, you know, she got to start here and there. Um, but it was good for her to feel what it's like to start, because it's cool to start, but you have to do that on a on a regular basis. It's, it's, it's taxing mentally, physically. And you're held to a, a certain responsibility every day in practice. So, you know, it's cool to do it. It's cool to be that that starting five. But then, you know, come game five, come half of the season, come end of the season when you're banged up, when you have to fight through mentally and physically, you, you don't know what that feels like. She's got a glimpse of what it feels like to do it in the postseason play. And she got a work cut out for her. But I think she just held her own. She didn't hit any shots today. Um, but it was a really good learning lesson for, for all of us and for her. Back to Chapel. Don, just your memories from the UNC game earlier this year. And obviously, they played y'all close in the Sweet 16 a few years ago. Um, what, what you're looking at and, and maybe why they've been able to keep those games really competitive the last few times. Um, I mean, they, they what they do, they do well. I mean, they get down in transition. They, they They've push the ball at you, um, us be runs like incredibly well, and they get her the ball early in their their offense. Um, Deja Kelly is, is, you know, she's hard to deal with, especially in ball screen action, and she's a seasoned guard that um, that plays really well. Um, God Dang is a great addition to their team, and she does a great job at uh, um, holding serve in the in the paint. It makes it very difficult for teams to to drive that ball at them. Denarski's great defender. You know, she's she's a dagger like player if you give her open looks. Um, just real great cohesive team that plays really physical. Um, and if you beat them, you have to beat them. Yeah, you know, there isn't any there isn't any um they're not gonna give you anything easy. Um, so it should be a battle. It should be a battle on Sunday. Alan. Chloe was talking about her confidence a second ago. Uh, where do you see the biggest difference in her than last March, and how much do you think going through a tournament last year off the bench helps her right now? Um, I mean, last year helped her um, work a little bit harder in the off season. To, to really understand what she needs to do to, to play at this level and consistently play at this level. Um, and I think just, you know, she's she's really a freshman when you really look at it. Um, so I, I, I think she's handled it well. But, again, it's taxing. You know, it is really, really hard to play consistently, you know, at this level. Um, for our, the schedule that we continue to have in the non-conference, our, our conference is – it's pretty hard, so um, I, I think her progression's going quite nicely. Like she's well above what a what a normal freshman 
um, plays like. Anything else for Coach Staley? Seeing none. Thank right. you all. Thank you, Coach. <coughs> See you tomorrow. Coach, if you would, please make an opening statement. First of all, South Carolina is an amazing basketball team and coached by an unbelievable coach. I just thought they came out really attacking this win and attacking the NCAA tournament the right way. Um, and honestly, I thought our team did too. I thought that the scrap and the effort, no matter what the score was, I'm just so proud of this team. and. I love them as basketball players, but I love them so much more as, as human beings and the way that they carry themselves. The community of PC and a lot of the basketball community has just fallen in love with this team because of who they are, how happy we are. We enjoy being around each other. We just absolutely, the last two weeks have been just an absolute blast and some of my most favorite moments as a coach. And I've done this for 18 years now and just where we were in the early stages of January to where we are now. And we've just played really, really good basketball at the right time. And it just goes back to character and culture wins. And that is why they stuck together and did not quit on me. And I'm just so thankful to be their head coach. Open up for questions for just the student athletes at this time. If you would raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start in the third row there. Hi, um, both, both of you guys. Um, what kind of – it seems like you guys were having to play in fast forward because of whether it was their speed or their length or whatever. Just what kind of problems did they present for you guys, especially defensively and on the boards? Brianna, you want to take that first? Um, they're a very physical team, and, and they're strong. I think that that definitely affected um, just us us playing. They pushed the ball. Um, we had to try to slow down, slow ourselves down because we kept finding ourselves getting sped up by their offense and like their transition and whatnot. Um, I mean, they're a good team. It, it, it is what it is. Um, 
we play we play hard we we go out there and we try to dictate things and and box out and do the things that we can control and i think that that um is an area that we definitely grew from the first time yeah tilda yeah i mean we all know they are incredible team they have such a a lot of talent in their team i mean they are undefeated this season every team has struggled with their talent and their uh, basketball but i mean yeah we, we were fighting and yeah they are a good team but i thought we did better than last time but yeah they're a good team other questions for the student athletes let's go to chapel here and then we'll go to Hey, for both players, um, basketball side coach mentioned yesterday that uh, Dawn Staley stopped by the team hotel, I think, Tuesday night. Um, how did that kind of come about, and what was it like to meet someone who just you know means so much to, to the women's game in general? Tilda, you want to take that first? Yes. Uh, no, it was so cool. Uh, I mean, she's such a good coach, and she, she's changing the women basketball. And like we have said before, like the women basketball are just growing, and she's definitely one of them who makes the women basketball grow. And... It was it was very cool seeing someone and talk to someone asking questions to someone that has changed basketball and I mean we all look up to her and that team that she's coaching so it's such a cool experience talking to her seeing her and also now get to play with them or against them uh, so yeah yeah um, I agree when she first uh, when we were trying to figure out like who was coming we knew it was a surprise but we didn't know what what was going to come through that door and when she did we all kind of were starstruck and she was like hi guys and we were like uh <laughs> and we were still stuck and she said hi like and then we kind of broke that broke that barrier that we were stuck in but it was so cool just being able to to talk to her and let her and hear what she had to say to us and congratulating us and stuff like that from somebody as great as she is, I'm, it means it means so much. Um, it was good to be able to pick her brain a little bit and see see what she had to say, how she was feeling, um, and just anything. We 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 took anything, we soaked it all in. Everyone says enjoy the moment, enjoy the process, and that was definitely a very cool experience to be able to meet one of the greats. Um, I appreciate her taking her time to come out there, and and it was it was really cool for me. I mean, you you look up to people like her. Um, as, as you go through this process as, as well. We're all in the basketball world and the women's basketball world, and it's really exciting to meet somebody who's, who's doing such, a, such great things in that side. Todd. Tilly, Coach mentioned uh, how happy you guys always are. And this might be a weird question coming after a 50-point loss, but was that fun? Yeah, I mean, sure. I thought it was fun. and We were hustling and everything. I mean, obviously it's not fun to lose any time, but if we're going to lose, we better do it to the number one seed. And I think small school like us doesn't want to play on the big stage like this. I, I think I heard someone from the last games being uh, saying, like, at least we don't play South Carolina. But, I mean, I'm so grateful for the ex experience. And we did what we uh, have worked on. And I love the experience. Playing on the big stage, that's what every athlete want to do. And, I mean, yeah, the score obviously wasn't on our side or anything. They are such a good team. but. This is experience that I'm going to bring forever in my basketball, and I'm so grateful that I got to play these two times. Uh, and on the when in the NCAA, NCAA tournament, it's it's been a journey. And finishing like this, I mean, we we want to be sent home against the number one seed, and I'm happy we did. I'm I'm cheering for South Carolina this tournament. So, yeah. Pete. Yeah, for both of you guys, Coach was talking about how special the season is. You know, when you look back on this season, I mean, you won an NCAA tournament game. What can what you what you've accomplished do for the program going forward? Do for the campus? Do for everything that's involved with Presbyterian College? Tilly, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, we 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 have just such a journey, and I mean. We got to remember this season for not the last game, but the whole season, especially the last two weeks. It's, it's been so cool experience. We just kept on making history, going just to the semifinals in our tournament, a conference tournament. And I'm so happy for this experience. And yeah, like I said, we, we need to remember this season for what we have accomplished and not the last game. I agree. Um, we definitely put PC out there and, and brought a name to the things that we've accomplished, making history not once, not twice, but three different times, four different times. I think that that's 
it says a lot about just our character too and and we believe in each other we go out there and we do what we're supposed to do we we had the mentality of going out there and doing what we were supposed to do what we what got us here and then showing our growth um as for PC and, and the school and whatnot, I think it just brings the community closer together. Um, people took the time to come out and watch us and come down the road and, and greet us when we came home the first time and and all of these things. Like we're just making the community so much stronger. And I'm really, really glad to be a part of it. It, it means a lot. Let's go to the third row there. Bree, you came out late in the game and you got had one last chance to you know get a hug and. Uh, and, and hear everybody cheer for you over on that sideline. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I f it's different for me this time around because I've been through it once before. And last year when I thought my season, when my, I thought my career was over, um, I went through those emotions and, and all of that and, and thinking that it was, it was done, thinking it was over. So when the time came again and Coach Sharp gave me a hug, it's like, making me realize it's it's over but it's okay you know what i mean like hearing everybody around like i came back for a sixth year to do great things i accomplished my goal and i wouldn't have rather do it with anybody but the, these girls these coaches and everybody around me it was it was definitely it felt good to hear everybody cheering and of course those emotions come through because it's it's my last career game but regardless of that i wouldn't have wanted to end it any other way Go to the second row there. Tilly, was this the most packed or loudest game you've ever played in, and how did it feel to kind of be on the court with that many fans cheering? Yeah, I mean, I said it to my teammates in the, in the warm-up, like that this might be the game that I have the most fans and other people watching us. And, I mean, we have a lot of people cheering for us, and they knew what we, who we're playing against. I'm just so happy they came and watched us still. They they know what we have done too. And for them coming up here and watch us and support us, that means a lot. And I mean, play, playing on the big stage, so that's so fun to me. And I mean, yeah, I want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? If not, they can go on back to the locker room. Thank you all. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. We'll take questions now for Coach Sharp. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Chapel's got the first one. Hey, Coach, you talked a lot about Sakatani yesterday, how, how good they are to see them up in person. I guess what did you learn about why this team is 33-0 and in, in title favorites? I think there's a lot of reasons why that they are 33-0. and 0. Um, You know, the first thing is it's hard to put a game plan together because there's so many pieces and so many weapons. If you help off this person, this person's a really great shooter, and they're bringing scores off the bench. Um, they had two of their best scores not even suited up today. And um, the way that they defend and their length, uh, the pace that they play with, there's just so many – things that they do so well as a basketball team. And, and in their last five games, they had been offensive rebounding 44% of their missed shots. And I look at the stat sheet and they do it again today and they, and they shot it so well and they, they didn't miss a lot of shots, but uh, they're a great basketball team. And I think coach Daly, she's not afraid to coach her kids either. She, she brings them off the bench. She plays the ones that deserve to start. And I think that that's why their toughness and how hard they play. And, and I thought Chloe Kitts was a, a really handful today she went nine for nine from the field I thought she played really well for them off the bench and and they're just a they're a great basketball team they've got a lot of athletes and and it's hard to help and dig and really team defend because there's always someone else ready to knock a shot down Pete Laura I think it was um I think Tilda had said that you know she thought that you guys played better this time than in December did you feel that as well that was a, a better game for you guys against them than in December. Yeah, and I think that we were in a little bit of a better position to be successful, just, um, you know, not playing the night before. I mean, at least we had two days before, and we did a walkthrough yesterday to try to get our legs back under us, and I thought we were a little back on our heels. I didn't love the way we started the game, but I love the way that we 
continue to compete. And I, I think I told him in a timeout, you know, there's potentially a million people watching us play and all these people in here. And we want to make sure that everybody knows how we fight and how we scrap and what really represent a PC, what represents a PC women's basketball player, because it, it's why we're here. It's why we survived. It's why we advanced. It's why we won three games in a row as the five seed in our conference tournament is because of the toughness and the grit and the resilient spirit of our team. Let's go over to, yeah, go ahead right there and then we'll work over to Todd and Chapel. Um, Coach, can you talk about just the roller coaster or the, the low lows and then, you know, to, to finish where you are right now? Yeah, I think there were obviously some low lows and most seasons are a little bit of an up and down season. Most, most times you can't get to where you want to get as a straight line. It's always bumpy and, and rocky and, and I think that there's been times where the players have been frustrated with me and I've been frustrated with them, but I just feel like we have these deep seated human connections with each other. And because of that, we were able to, to really just stick together. And it's almost like the rockier it got and the rough, more rough it got, the better we got. And the, the thing about it is, you know, I, I worked for Joy Lee McNellis, who's the head coach at University of Southern Mississippi, and everybody knows that she's battling cancer. And in our pink game, we, we did a McNellis strong game. And I FaceTime her after we won the, the championship game because she gave me the chance at the Division One level. I, I mean, I applied for a million jobs, and she took a chance on me. And, and um, I FaceTimed her, and I told her that ever since we wore those McNellis Strong T-shirts, we started playing so much tougher and so much scrappier. And, and I just love that we were doing it in those T-shirts. But that's what we want our program to be about is just resilient and, and family and relationships. And if you notice our team, they, they high-five, they support each other. Uh, Dogne Epsite, you know, she's on the bench. She hardly ever gets into the rotation, and she's one of the greatest humans I've ever coached. Her, her, her attitude and how hard she goes every single day, her emotions after the game, knowing that our season was over, she was very emotional. So top to bottom, injured players, coaching staff. I just feel like we do it the right way, um, you know, just really trying to put culture and character first. Todd. Coach, from Wednesday to today, uh, did you notice any change of atmosphere in this building? <laughs> and, uh, um, did it make you appreciate that, that early game with the home feel even more? Yeah, and I know that there's a lot of talk about feeling that they want regional sites and stuff for the first few rounds of, of women's basketball, but I, I love the environment. Um, I, I think it's awesome for the game. I think, I mean, I even looked up and I, I bumped the assistant coach and I was like, or one of our assistant coaches, and I'm like, do you see the people in the upper upper deck? I, I, I don't remember there being people up there the last time that we played, and and it's so. I'm so thankful, like Tilda said, to be able to experience this type of atmosphere again. I think it was even a little bit more incredible than the first time that we played here. But it's just what Coach Daly has done with her program. I mean, when she took over where it was and where it is now and how many people have rallied around her, I mean, that's that's the goal of all of us as head coaches. I mean, that's what I feel like in a lot, lot smaller scale – We've done that somewhat in the last couple months with our own program where students have started showing up to our home games and our, our you know, I think we were like last in attendance when I took over at Presbyterian and, and we've been able to move the needle and, and I just hope one day that we can have sellout crowds in our own gym on the smaller scale, but, but that's the goal and that's what we're trying to do and being able to compete in an environment that has done that, it's just awesome and I'm thankful. Chapel, to your left. Hey, uh, your players mentioned Dawn dropping by the hotel. I know you talked about that already, but you know that's something she could have said no to. What, what, what does it mean for South Carolina to kind of roll out the red carpet, per se, to y'all as the 16 seed um, outside of the game itself? Yeah, I mean, we felt the same way, too, at our Big South tournament. I thought our Big South um, administration did a great job of putting that together. And then we come to the NCAA tournament and the experience that our players have had. I mean, we, we told them there was a surprise coming. Um, and they were guessing, they were guessing like Barack Obama since he had picked <laughs> us in the bracket, J. Cole. So it was really kind of giggling around, just listening to all the people that they were guessing. And I watched the video of their reaction when she walked in probably 12 times because I wanted to see each person and how they reacted. I mean, their faces, it, it just shows what she means to everyone that's either coaching or involved in, in the women's game. And our players were, were excited and, and, 
I, I made sure to tell them, you know, she didn't have to come by. She didn't have to do that. And, but, but she knows that she has a platform and, and how people feel about her. And I just think that that shows why she is who she is. She's just a good person. And um, I appreciate her investing in our program. Pete. Laura, we talked about some of the history that you guys have made this year. What can it do? And you talked about wanting to move the needle there uh, on campus. I mean, you still at PC are going to face some limitations uh, in enrollment size and things like that. How can this help, this season help, build your program going forward? Well, it's another step. Um, you know, I think that you lay a foundation for your program, and I think the foundation has been lifted up a little bit of where we'll start going forward and in, into the future. But I think what happens when you have a group of kids that experience winning and experience what a championship feels like and knows that every time you make it to the next round, there's more surprises in the locker room and just all the fun that comes with winning and competing with some of the best. I mean, we played after North Carolina, Michigan State. I mean, that is awesome and a dream come true for our program and but once those players experience this then they teach the younger players this is what we're competing for this is what we're working for every day and then it's ingrained in your program and we have a lot of young players and it, I love what Tilda said exactly what she said we got to clip that we got to send that out to recruits she said I want to be back I want to come back and that's the kind of winner that she is and she's only a sophomore and you guys saw her. She competed like a, a senior. She's a winner. And our program is full of those. Last question. You talk a lot about growing the women's game and how important that is to you. Um, I think after the first four win, there was a clip of you talking about that that went pretty viral. Um, how does it feel to become such a big part of that? Well, I, I hope I'm a part of growing it. I, I know that's something that I want to do. but. Focusing in on our own community, I mean, I, I got a text message today that someone's um, either second or third grade class watched the game in their class, and when we got back from the Big South Championship, there were like 25 pictures from an elementary school that drew pictures um, congratulating our, our team and our players, and so all I want to do is is be a role model in our community and our players want to be role models. We have pen pals that we write back and forth to. So that's something that we've always tried to do and wanted to do. But kind of like I said before, just this team, the way that they carry themselves, there's just when you're around them, you start experiencing the fun and the joy. And that is why we've kind of lit a fire in the Clinton community. And I'm so glad people finally have realized it. And winning helps, obviously. And I'm just hoping that it springboards the future of the program for people to continue to rally around our women's basketball program in our community specifically. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank Thanks you.